Marshall knows stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around, and you might know some stuff that I know. What are we gonna do today? I know. Let's make something so we can make some more stuff. We're gonna be making a forge today, so we can make some more stuff. Recently, I did the rotors on my Jeep because they looked like this. In case you don't know, they're not supposed to look like this. So, what I did is I took a rotor and welded a floor flange onto the bottom of it. Notice it welded off center, which isn't really that big of a deal. Also, it's a really ugly weld. Because I didn't get all the galvanization off there, I actually pushed it whenever the wire feed on the MIG welder started to feed out. But uh, I would have cut it off and made a better bead and centered it if it were consequential. It's not. It's going to work just fine this way. So this is going to be our base. We're actually going to put all of our charcoal in here. And this inlet for the flange is what is going to be feeding the air onto the charcoal. On to the next step. Originally, I'd planned to make the legs out of this angle iron. I got it for free from a steel manufacturer uh, here in town. But it's really thick and really heavy, and it would make the whole forge way too heavy. It would uh, be really hard to move, prohibitively heavy. So instead, I went to a local flea market and started looking around and found for five bucks a bed frame. This is still angled, so it's plenty tough, and it's about an eighth of an inch thick so I don't think it's gonna go anywhere even with the weight of the rotor and all the rest of the components on there. So let's start chopping this up into legs. Now I've got a plan for my pot and my legs kind of and now I need to figure out <clears throat> how long my legs are gonna be. I'm gonna get my pot and I'm gonna hold it at a comfortable working height, take my ta tape measure, get it to the ground, but I want to kick it out by about five degrees so that the legs are stable. Kick it out a little bit and see where I'm at. 39 inches looks like it'll be good. We'll go with 39 inches on the legs. So I just measured the overall length of the bed frame and I only have two sides of it and they're only about 62 and a half inches long. That's not gonna be long enough for my original measurement. What I did look at though is these casters that are on each side are about seven inches. So I can bring up the overall height by about seven inches if I put a caster on each of the three legs. <clears throat> That'll get me the height that I need and uh, then I'll have enough angle iron from the existing bed frame to accomplish that. And always remember, safety up. Gloves and eye protection when you're doing this kind of stuff. You guys didn't get to see that, but uh, my sec second camera is actually my 6S, and the uh, stand let go of my workbench, and it smashed it. Awesome, huh? Hooray! Well, now that we've got the cross members off and my phone is already busted, let's continue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of the uh, long pieces of the bed frame, stack them on top of each other, and then cut them directly in half. Then that way I'm going to have uh, the same length of four legs, although I'm only going to be using three, and I'll tell you why later. Fabulous. Now that we've got all these rivets cut off, 
Uh, they're still poking through the angle, so we're going to hammer those out just so that they're out of the way. This is what these rivets look like. They're already taken off on one side, so it'll be easy to pop out. And that's the way that they are on either side. This one needs a little bit more coaxing from the angle grinder. And there it goes. Okay, now that we've got all the rivets out, we're gonna stack them on top of each other, measure half, and then cut them directly in half. It, exactly half is 63 and 1 8, which is an odd number, but it will be imperative that we cut them directly in half. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're gonna have one leg that's a little bit longer than the rest of them. I'm going with three legs because if you have four legs, if any of them are off at all, then you're gonna get a wobble like uh, the chair at the restaurant you need to put a sugar packet underneath. However, if you have three legs, even if one is a little bit shorter, it's not gonna wobble because uh, there's no exact opposite end that's going to give it that pivot point. You have three legs and at the very worst that's gonna happen is one side will droop a little bit more than the rest. <sighs> Oh, super is. Great. Okay, since we have such an odd number, we need to uh, divide it in half. It was 63 and 1 8, the total length of these. That gives us 31 and 9 16 Let's measure out 31 and 9 16 and then cut this bad boy right in half. Let's go ahead and measure it from the other side too, just to make sure that we're exactly on. We tape it this side, and we are at... Yep, 31 and 9 sixteenths. Now that we've got all of our legs cut, let's take a look. We'll get them all right about the same. The flush on that side, I'm definitely gonna need to square that up a little bit. If you look, it was at an angle. So I'll square that up a little bit or you know what, before I square it up, I just realized these are gonna be at an angle. I'm gonna kick them out a little bit. So I'm gonna see what angle I actually want these at. And then this one remainder with the, uh, the end on it, that one's trash now. Cause like I said, I only need the three square on here. I'm holding the angle iron onto the bottom of the pot where I want it at. And I'm looking at five degrees, and I don't think five degrees is gonna do it. If I move it to about 10, that looks like it is gonna cut it. So I'm gonna angle the tops of all of my pieces at about 10 degrees so that they sit on here square and then kick out at about 10 degrees for stabilization. Okay. Now I've got all the legs cut to where I want them. I need some sort of cross member on these to keep them uh, stable and to allow them to fold in and out too. I'm planning on making this uh, portable forge. So if I ever want to fold it up and take it anywhere that I, I can. Uh, so because of that, I'm not going to weld these legs. I'm going to drill holes through each one of these legs at the same spot and then I'm going to cut and drill a hole through a cross member that are all the exact same length also. So, <clears throat> I need to figure out how far apart that I want them before I cut that cross member because that's going to determine how far apart the, the legs are from each other. Uh, I'm going to mark each one of these at the exact same spot so I can make sure at least all of my holes are all lined up. 
So I'm just going, going to mark where I want each one and then I'm going to measure to the middle of this and then drill the hole through there instead of just drilling a hole straight through all three at the same time. That'll put it off and it's going to make it also unbalanced that way. Okay, I measured out the distance that I wanted for the cross members between each uh, one of the legs. That's about 16 inches, which works out perfect because these uh, braces for the bed frame that came with it are uh, each 33 inches, and they have holes drilled at either side already. So I'm just gonna cut these in half, or cut the uh, 16 inches out of these and use these for the cross members. Excellent, 16. I'm just going to clean up the end of it. And I'm cutting off this middle cut on purpose because, like I said, the holes are drilled at this side, so I want to retain each of the ends. I'm just cutting the little section out of the middle because I can't use that little section. I want both of the end pieces. Got it. That's why I like to use leather gloves when I'm using the angle grinder. It turns these to mush real quick. We still have another cast that we need to remove from the cross member so that we have all three of them. Let's get to that. Okay, now we've got all of our legs and all of our cross members. We can put them all together now. Hey, oh! You might have noticed I'm in different clothes today. It's because we're on day two of this build. <clears throat> today, I'm going to put cross members are going across the base of the legs so I can attach the casters to something that is horizontal instead of just trying to attach to the very bottom of the leg. I'm also going to be putting together all the pipes for the forced air that is gonna be going into the pot. Uh, this video is already getting a little bit long. So let's switch over to time-lapse so you don't have to watch all this BS anymore. So we didn't get very far yesterday. We uh, got to about two of the base cross members before I had to go and do something else. A uh, friend needed help painting and honey-do lists. But it's a good thing that we've got uh, an extra day off of work so we can finish doing this. So let's finish this. Let's get, a, let's get this forge done today. 
One more uh, base cross member to do, get the casters on, put all the piping together, and then we'll be good to go. Let's hit it. Okay, and in looking at these, <clears throat> the casters actually already came off of one side of uh, two out of three of these. So if I put them on there, they actually line up perfect on two of these. So then all that I have left to do is the one remaining. I'll just need to drill that hole right there. As you can see, I already marked it. Or maybe you can't see. Either way... I've got a mark there so that I can drill that last one out and then all these are going, are going to match up. Okay, let's get to assembling all this now. Actually, okay, now getting all the stuff together to force the air into your pot to actually blow the air on your charcoal and get it hot enough to be able to uh, heat up steel is, is re relatively easy to come by. The problem is it's usually kind of expensive. <clears throat> what I did, 5 inch nipple, an 8 inch nipple, and then this T-junction. You can see it coming together already. So thread this into there. You don't need to get it crazy tight. It's, uh, it's going to be airtight, even if you get a few threads on there. Plus, if you ever want to take it apart, it's going to be a lot harder to take apart, especially if it heats and cools. This area of the, uh, of the forge actually isn't going to see that much heat. You'll actually notice that I am using some galvanized on this. I'm not worried about the galvanized heating up, though, because this is all air going through there. But there will be a small amount of heating and cooling. So... Pot, five inch nipple, T-junction, and eight inch. What I'm gonna do is take a two inch, 90 degree elbow. You'll see on the bottom of that, I've got a two inch to three inch reducer. It's because we're gonna be getting air from this bathroom fan. I got and it's a three inch outlet on the bathroom fan. So we're gonna have to reduce it down. We have to use that reducer to get it down. So next, our 90 degree elbow. Thread it into the two inch T that we have here. This does have to point the right way, so I'm going to WD it to see if I can get that additional almost 180 degree turn out of there. Fabulous. Okay. And that is the air induction for most of this. Notice that I'm still empty on the bottom. What I'm going to do for this is the reason I use a nipple is so I can have the thread on there. You can just get a two inch cap cap the bottom and then when your ash falls through it'll collect into this nipple and then when you need to empty it just take off your cap and empty out your ash voila now let's set it all together this is still going to set on top just like I planned all the components are sitting in there nice and snug 
One thing about the using the 90 degree elbow is I probably will want to make a stand to support this because I don't want that tipping out like that. All right, our forge is almost complete now. Let's go ahead. Slip the bathroom fan on. Little hose clamp to secure it. Torque it down on that enough to hold it, but not too much to crush it because it is a plastic piece. Seems nice and secure. Let's set it up. One of the last couple things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this screen, it's uh, for a, like a bathtub drain. I'm gonna put it over the inlet on the floor flange so that I don't have uh, my charcoal falling through quite as easy. And it just rests in there. This is why you don't store charcoal in plastic buckets. This is all charcoal that I make. Um, you can make it pretty easily out of, you know, just uh, whatever wood you have laying around. I'll make a video on that also later. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and stuff the whole thing full of charcoal. As you can see, I've got my pot full of charcoal. You can hear the fan running. I'm going to go ahead and just kickstart it with blowtorch real quick here and see if I can get it going. I went ahead and threw some charcoal in. I just got started with the blow charcoal real quick. And I'm actually kind of surprised at how fast it got going with just uh, that little bit of air from the bathroom fan pushing on it. We'll give it about uh, a minute and see where we're at. <clears throat> I was actually really skeptical about uh, how effective that was going to be with as little air as the bathroom fan was pushing onto it. I felt it and it didn't feel like there was that much coming out, but that thing got cooking real fast. Under two minutes and it's already blazing. I, this looks like it's gonna work out pretty good. With as little air as on here, you can see how hot this is burning already. I might actually even have to turn this down because it's blowing so hot. This is actually gonna work pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a wrench on here just to see how it works out. I'm gonna go ahead and just set up my anvil and the camera pointing over here real quick because I'm just gonna throw that wrench on there. Give it a couple of whacks, see how it works out. It's gonna have to get a lot hotter in order to get those two teeth together, but uh, for the first 10 minutes of running my first forge. It's working out pretty good, I think. All right, gang, that was kind of cool. We uh, took a $5 bed frame, an old rotor, and some piping and turned it into uh, our own forge now. Uh, we're gonna be able to make some other cool stuff. Uh, and it didn't end up too bad. I got a uh, malformed wrench out of the deal. I only hit it a couple of times. It was just kind of to see how effective it was gonna be. There's probably actually some uh, tweaking that I'd want to do on it. The, uh, I feel like the pot itself is not big enough, so I think I'm going to put something around it to hold more charcoal in there. And then also, I'm going to need like some sort of a stock sand because I don't know uh, if you saw it or not, but uh, just setting the wrench on the lip, it was kind of wanting to teeter out. So I want to set some, put something up there so I can set some longer stuff in. It's not going to teeter out of the heat. But uh, that was fun. Uh, Go ahead and subscribe, like, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.